Hello there, it's Sandy Alnock, and it is time for another Sunday video. And this is going to be another watercolor one because it's World Watercolor Month. And I have chosen to use a rather long section of scripture. You care for the land and water it, you enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with grain, for so you have ordained it. You drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. You crown the year with your bounty and your carts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks and the valleys are mantled with grain. They shout for joy and sing. That's all from Psalm 65. And there was so many little visuals in this. I'm not going to use them all because that would be a really complex picture to have absolutely everything in there. But I've been wanting to do a waterfall for a while. So there we go. It's a good verse to add a waterfall in there because it talks about water and abundance and all that sort of thing. So I'm going to draw a couple hillsides down here, just some little lumps, just little rounded shapes. And looking through the verse for which other kind of imagery I want to throw in, I wanted to put the sheep in there. I love the idea of the flocks all over the hills. And I drew a few of them in there just so I didn't forget by the time I got there and start painting all the grass in. I wanted to leave some of the openings for the sheep and then added some trees on the top of the hills. And then I, I'm just drawing in a couple more sheep. To give myself some scale, I'm going to use bigger sheep in the front and smaller ones in the back. And that's really all I'm going to do for my outline. I'm going to do my pen work afterward because if my brush goofs up, I can fix it with the pen later on. So I'm going to start by painting the rocks on the waterfall on either side of it, the rocky ridge at the top. So I'm going to give it a, a nice V shape where all that water is flowing through. And it's done with a grayish paint, so I wanted to add some color to it. So I'm going to drop in just a little bit of green for the trees at the top of the ridge as well as a little bit around the sides of the waterfall where the water would be growing some maybe little mosses and things on the rocks themselves. And I just love adding details like this when the paper is wet because all that color is going to mix in nicely and just turn out really pretty. This section got a little bit carried away and you'll see later on as I have to recover it, but I've got some blue paint in here where I'm making above the hillsides that are there, I'm making the water that's coming from the waterfall. There's a lot of that white spray down at the bottom of the waterfall but then it turns into the blue water and then I wanted my trees to be soft trees against the edge of that water so I kind of painted them along there and they did continue to move and I will have to fix that later because when you do wet into wet it can be a challenge because you end up with a lot of color just running amok and doing its own thing but it's not that it can't be fixed. So now I'm just working with some paint. I mixed some nickel azo, which is a really bright light yellow color, in with my green mixture so that I could have a different green in the hills down below. So if you have limited watercolors, you can mix your own. Just throw in a little of something else to make a puddle of color that's what you want. And I wanted something that felt like an olive green, but not a dark olive green, just a light color. So I mixed it both thin as well as with that yellow. And then I'm dropping in some sap green just so that there's some shadows under my sheep as I get to painting them. And I know it doesn't look like sheep yet. It will. Trust me. You guys should know by now, by now that <laughs> things look like a hot mess until they're not. And I'm getting a little of the rivulets from the paper as it does its little wrinkly bit. And so I dried it completely and then I'll run an iron over it with a piece of paper above and below the page to protect it. And that's going to give me a smoother surface to proceed with my drawing. So now I can go in with a micron pen and start to draw in just little blobs around each one of those open spaces that I left. So while you might think, oh my goodness, you painted around all those sheep. No, I didn't. I didn't draw the sheep in until I had the open spaces of white. And I'm just going to give the ones in the, the background there, I'm just going to give them two little tiny dots for legs because they're far away, you wouldn't really see much. As they get larger, I'm going to make wider and bigger little shapes of the sheep. 
And I'm making sure that I don't put them all like in a line next to each other. Some of them are behind each other, so they're just partial ovals. And as I get to the ones in the very front, I can add heads to them. And a head for a sheep is just like a little circle with two ears hanging off of it. It really doesn't have to be much. You can make a head off the side by putting a little oval and adding an ear to that one. And they're so small, you don't have to get into a lot of details. Just give them a couple legs, and the ones in the front should have a little bit of, you know, few of them should have heads, not all of them. Because sometimes you just see the sheep's butt. You don't need to actually draw them all. It can just be a sheep's butt instead. But as they go off into the distance, and you still have some little marks made out there, they're getting tinier and tinier and tinier, so that it looks like you have these these just sheep all over the place going off into the distance. I'm adding a little bit more detail onto my waterfall and I was thinking about drawing in all the rocks and I decided nah I wanted to leave something restful on there because the bottom portion is so busy and then I took the pen and made my hillsides just a little bit as well. Just to give them a little more definition so that I have some definite hillsides. It's sort of a challenge when you've got the sheep already drawn in to figure out where that little hillside might be in between them. But I think it worked out really well. I liked the page when I was all done with it. And I have room on the right side of the scripture to do a little journaling over there in the gutter of the page. So I've got that abundant water, my little sheep, my flocks on the hills. And I hope this inspired you to try something maybe this week. Do another little page in your Bible and spend some time with the Lord seeking him about what the scripture is saying to you. And I will see you again next week with another video. Bye-bye.